to a very special sports broadcast today on Comcast. We're at Carondelet High School where the Cougars are hosting the Liberty Lions in a girls volleyball match. Dan Wall and Emerson Salonga today in on color for you. And Emerson, let me introduce you to the folks out there. You're new to our broadcast. You played at uh, University of Illinois. That's correct. Coached at Cal and Utah State and now are a teacher at Castro Valley High School. Tell us a little bit about your background and, and, and your love of volleyball. Well, I tell you, I've been coaching for about 13 years at all various levels, uh, junior nationally with USA Volleyball and at high school level. Well, good. And to, you're going to teach us a little bit about the game as well today because this is new for me as well, my first ever volleyball game. Let's talk a little bit about Liberty. They go for their first ever BBL championship today. They're led by Allison Cicchini. She's one of the best players in the area. That's correct. Allison Cicchini, the setter for Liberty. She's going to be uh, going on a full ride scholarship at the uh, University of Florida for the Gators. Yeah, and she's wonderful. I'll tell you, this whole team, though, very, very good. Undefeated in league play. For Carondelet, you know Kyle Lamette. We saw her on the softball field. She's also a stud on the volleyball court. That's right. Right. Kyle Lament is going to be their go-to person for attacking tonight. It should be a great match. Liberty goes for their first ever championship against Carondelet here next on Comcast. What is a coach? A teacher? A motivator? A leader? The person who sees your athletic potential and maximizes it, regardless of the sport. At Velocity Sports Performance, you train with a highly qualified coach every time you train. Your coach makes you work hard, but your coach makes you a better athlete. Train with a coach who knows. Velocity Sports Performance. Maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Since 1980, Fresky Air Systems Incorporated has been keeping Contra Costa cool and comfortable. With an expert crew of technicians and staff, let Fresky be your indoor comfort professionals. Our Lennox Signature Home Comfort Systems are designed to deliver efficient and economical air and heat for your individual needs. Air conditioning to heating, duct cleaning to emergency service calls, Fresky has you covered. From the homeowner to the commercial world, Fresky Air Systems Incorporated. Reliable and trusted service since 1980. If you dump your oil, tempers boil, it ends up in the bay. Oh, smile, it's all Buster Camera. Don't want your oil to choke us, you're in focus, your neighbors just might say. Smile, it's all Buster Camera. Well, it's not fun to pay a big fine for polluting our water supply. No. It's not fun to talk to police as the neighbors walk on by. So now you're reeling, how's the wallet feeling? A big fine you're gonna pay. Smile, it's a buster camera. Smile, it's a buster camera. Hi, I'm Rocco Viali, and I'd like to welcome you to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria here in Walnut Creek. Rocco's is a great place for family dining. In addition to serving the best pizza in the East Bay, Rocco's also serves many classic Italian pasta specialties. Make Rocco's your home for your next team party. Great pizza, great pasta, great people. Rocco's! A part of your community. Back at Carondelet High School, Dan Wall, Emerson Salonga, Matt Bolander, a great Comcast crew. First time ever here doing volleyball, uh, for me anyway, Emerson, and with you. Uh, Matt did it last year, and it was a great success. That's why we're back. But uh, tell us uh, this warm-up that they do. It's intense, and it goes on forever. Uh, that's right. It, it may seem like it could go on forever, but they want to make sure that their players are, are, are ready and prepared to, to ba basically pull off some of these dynamic skills that they're going to perform tonight. You know, it's, it makes the, the warm-up for the National Hockey League look like something in elementary <laughs> school after, after watching it and then going to the Sharks game the other night. There's the Lion um, looking very dapper tonight, probably the second best head of hair in here aside from mine. But... Um, it's senior night, and we're going to have an uh, introduction of all the Carondelet seniors who are uh, out here. This will be their last uh, home game. We're actually introducing, I think, the seniors from Liberty as well, which is kind of a classy thing to do. Number 22 is uh, Nicole Anderson.
And number 23, of course, is Allison Cicchini, who we talked about earlier, going to the University of Florida on a full-ride scholarship. Number 32 is Kelly Quinn. There's three seniors on this team, which also shows you what kind of depth they're going to have next year. And you mentioned that both Allison and Kelly will be playing club volleyball for you after their season is finished. Uh, that's correct. They'll be playing for Golden Bear Volleyball on a very competitive nationally, uh, nationally ranked team. Now, Kelly Quinn is uh, going to go somewhere. She just hasn't made up her mind yet, so that's correct. Now we'll meet the Carondelet seniors. Number 19 is Kelly Svoboda. And I would, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's her parents. I would venture a guess. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations to uh, Kelly and her family. And they, they, they kind of look like a family. If they had long blonde hair, you might uh, have, <laughs> have a question there. But, uh, number seven is uh, Maria Lacuna. And here's her parents. And they have three seniors as well. Ali Banger is the other one. So I have a feeling, Emerson, that if we stay with this kind of schedule, we might be back here next year. That's correct. <laughs> these, these teams are very deep and they're very strong and well coached. Well, it's an unconfirmed uh, stat that we have that seven years in a row, Carondelet has won the BBL championship. I, I don't dispute that. It just hasn't, wasn't confirmed, but that's the rumor that we have. Liberty has never won. Linda, Linda um, Gillarducci is in her 23rd year as head coach. She's never won a league championship, even though she's won two North Coast section championships. That's kind of an amazing stat when you think about it. That is correct. I tell you, she's one of the most dedicated, serious coaches in the area. And uh, for those of you out there kind of saying, how does that work? Liberty's a Division I school. They're in the biggest uh, d category for enrollment. Condolet is Division II. So as a matter of fact, last year, Carondelet won the Division II championship. They were both tied for third in Northern California at the end of the year ranking. Of course, Archbishop Mitty is a big-time power in volleyball, and uh, I'm sure they were involved in some, one of those games in there somewhere, perhaps in, in the Division II. This kind of looks like dodgeball in a way. Uh, it does, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and from being a coach, you, you, even if you're in the, on, the, on the sidelines, you have to have your heads up here. Well, I was going to say, there says Coach Gillarducci. I mentioned 23rd year at Liberty. My dad went to Liberty. I don't think she was been there that long, though. <laughs> and there's Coach Jerry Mix of the uh, Carondelet Cougars. She, he's assisted, by the way, by Monty Aniboli, who went to uh, St. Mary's, and you know a little bit about. That's correct. She was my assistant coach for a couple years during club, um, club volleyball. And sitting next to Molly and Jerry Mix is Alicia Powers. Uh, Cal University of California middle blocker. And of course her sister Monica is a junior here playing water polo and we'll see her in December when we start our basketball coverage. She's going to be with uh, Jane Appel. She'll be a very important part of the Cougar basketball squad which was a North Coast section runner up last year and a state champion uh, in past years and will be favored this year as well. So now in this drill right here do you try to hit the real good player on the other team coach or do you, are you <laughs> um, you know, that, that could be a strategy for some coaches, <laughs> but you, get, you better watch out when the ball's in play here. Someone told me the other day when I first showed up to watch the game that uh, the warm-up is crazy, and it, I, I can attest to that. You have the junior varsity and the freshmen go out there, and you have a lot of uh, serving going on, and balls flying all over the gym, and it... I don't know, it looks like a lot of fun, actually. That's right, it is a lot of fun, and, and, and especially during hitting lines where your team wants to win hitting lines so you can hit the best, so you can bounce the ball off the floor and try to hit the ceiling. So there's, there's a lot of competition, even in warm-ups. Now, this is a very small gym. There, there, there will undoubtedly be balls off of the roof played here today. Now, you mentioned to me if the ball hits the roof above you off of your play, it's in, it's in bounds, but if it goes over the net and hits, it's out of bounds. That's correct. If the ball is kept in play on your side, you can still play that. If you have uh, remaining contacts left, if the ball goes over the net, it's out of bounds. So Emerson will be our teacher here today, teaching us a little. I've, I've kind of brushed, uh, brushed up a little. Let's take a look at the, uh, the rosters for both of these squads as they are getting ready now to introduce, I believe, the starting six that will be on the floor for both teams. Well, there's Liberty starters right there in front of you. But one thing we've got to talk about is the Libro. Now, that's, I think I'll save that for a, a, maybe a timeout, but you've got to explain to everyone what the Libro is, and that's the L up there. But you see Ashley Martin, Amanda Humphrey, Sam Mayberry, Paige Winthrop, 
Tanya Alvino, Leanna Ritchie, Nicole Anderson, and then switch around to page two, and you, I don't know if we have it, but uh, obviously Cicchini and Parker, Ford, Quinn, and Try, there they are, are also there. So that's the whole roster. I would assume that Quinn and Cicchini would probably be the two focus players on the floor for Liberty. That's correct. Uh, Liberty is, is lead, led by Kelly Quinn with kills and assists with, um, well, Tanya Alvino along with Allison Cicchini. And just to go back to the uh, Libro position, you'll always be able to le recognize a Libro because she's wearing a different color jersey. Right, That's and that was one of the first questions I asked uh, Coach Mix as I talked to him last week. They played in Antioch last week. What does the different jersey mean? As now we're gonna have this, uh, does this have a name, Coach? I'm sorry? Does this have a, a name, or is this just like the uh, the pregame uh, This is just sportsmanship. Pre yes, pregame rituals for some teams. Some teams don't even do this, but it looks very exciting tonight. For Carondelet, here's their players. Uh, Taylor Hennessy, Christina Berry, Sarah Glickman, Maria Lacuna we saw as a senior, Jen Bauer, Chrissy Edkin, Caitlin Luquette, her father is sitting right next to me. He, that's Dennis Luquette, who coaches the Deer Valley baseball team, a good friend of ours. Ashley Martin, excuse me, that's Liberty. Now we'll go to the next Carondelet page. There you go. Sarah Drosbaugh, her sister was a Carondelet alum, Monica, Allie Banger, Kelly Sabota, Kyle Lamette, who he mentions, their big player, and Caitlin Fontana for Jerry Mix. That's right, and you'll you'll notice the, the U as a position listed there. That means utility. You might see that player go in at various positions on the court. So the six players for Carondelet that have come out are Caitlin Luquette, Kyle Lamette, Allie Banger, Sarah Glickman, Kelly Sabota, and Maria Lacuna. The starters for Liberty, Allison Cicchini, Tanya Alvino, Nicole Anderson, Kelly Quinn, Leanna Ritchie, and Katie Try. And you see a lot of substitution in volleyball. It's a that's correct. A lot of a lot of stuff you're going to have to explain to our viewers, but uh, that's good. Something uh, new to check out here. Yeah, you'll have an opportunity to see a lot of different players play tonight. So we're set and ready to go. Liberty is 12-0 and in league. The assumption, of course, is the winner of this match will win the league champ. If it's Liberty, there will be un there'll be no doubt. If Carondelet wins tonight, they'll have to play out, and they could end up in a tie, and then that tiebreaker only has to do with title because, once again, the divisions are different. Overall, they're 25-9. and Carondelet's 11-1. and Their only loss was the first match at, in Brentwood, which went to a Liberty in four games, 3-1, to one, and overall, they're 20-9. and nine. Carondelet in the white jerseys at home here tonight. That's Caitlin Duquette. And uh, Liberty in the visiting uh, red and gold. And it looks like here Liberty may have a little confusion in their lineup. Let's see if they can iron that out before match play starts. I think the confusion is whether or not their, their setter, Allison Ciccini, is starting front row or back row. Now, is there any sort of penalty for that? Um, usually, during the first point, no. But during play, there can be a delay of game. And that would just be an awarding of one point? Yes, that's correct. You see, Fletcher came out of retirement tonight on, on camera. That's true. I can't turn the red light off. So Fletcher is out of retirement working camera tonight with our, our great crew out here. Our uh, referee tonight is David First, and our umpire, Steve Earnhardt, who's uh, a teacher at Antioch High School. And he's out there on the floor right now. And you can see the, ump uh, the referee is, is above. The, the, uh, he has to, to judge the, the net. There he is. And the little poles, for those of you, I don't know if we get a shot of the little poles that protrude up from the net, but that's out of bounds. That's correct. Those are called antennas. And if the ball touches the antenna, out of bounds, or goes on the outside of the antenna, also out of bounds. Now, can we get any sort of satellite radio reception off there? <laughs> I no. wish we could. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> so Luquette will serve for Carondelet. I think we've got everything ironed out here. This can go five ga uh, games, folks. 25 the first four. You have to win 25 points. And uh, 15 on the fifth game. There's a nice set, and that is, now that is, is nutty, as, as small as this room is, because any time, I would say, a, a hard return comes off, you have the possibility of putting up in the roof like that. That's correct, and, and, and for that matter, I think Condolet has the advantage of being used to playing in a small gym situation. Oh, that was a great serve and ace by Luquette there. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of, it's, it reminds you of the Astrodome or the or you know one of the domes baseball stadiums where the speakers are live and you saw everyone dive back for that ball because it would have been a live ball. So it's two to nothing here, Carondelet. And now it's three to nothing because now that's one thing you want to put that that set up near the net. You don't want to put it up so the other team can play it though. Is that correct? That's correct. You want to pass the ball to the middle of the court. And that serve was out. So now, in the old style of playing, the side out style, you had to actually be serving to win a point. We don't do that anymore. Now it's called rally scoring, and you get a point for every play. So now Liberty will get a point and the serve. And that was a good block that someone played under. You want to explain that real, Coach? Oh, that's correct. A player who is involved in the play, well, actually at any time, cannot step totally across underneath the line. That's that mid-court line right there, which is also the mid-court line for basketball. We're playing the yellow lines today, if you can see them on television. Now, that helped them. If you can believe that they kept that alive. Good dig that time, and now here's a set. And it's a nice block attempt by Glickman, but it was put away by Liberty. And now it's uh, all tied at three. That's right, that was a nice hit by the outside hitter of Liberty, tooling the ball off the block. This is almost like ultimate rules volleyball with the roof in play in here today. <laughs> and there's a block and a nice dig, and here is Cicchini with a little, I love those little taps. That's, that's where some of the strategy and individuality of volleyball comes in, because that's not something you can really, uh, you can coach it, but it has to be decided on the court. That's correct. I think the one advantage uh, Liberty may have in this match is they're just a lot bigger than Carondelet at, at, the, at the net. Now there's a, uh, a bad serve. Now, is there a proper term for that? Yes, that is called a service error. There's nothing really too fancy about that. This ball goes to the other side when you hit the ball in the net. Although if the ball hits the net and goes over, it is live. It's playable, but not a let like it is in tennis or ping pong, correct? You don't get another serve. And remember, you can only hit the ball three times on your side of the court. And there's a nice block by number 20, Leanna Ritchie. We don't have their blocking stats. I'd assume she's done that quite a bit uh, this year. Here's a nice replay of it. That's very good. You can see the penetration by the middle blocker of Liberty. I don't even know if that would have even counted as a block. It looked like it actually went into the net. She caused that to, to actually happen. There's a little tap and a return, but out of bounds. So, so far, pretty even. Both teams uh, kind of feeling each other out. they got to know each other pretty well, though, at this point, you would think. Oh, that's right. A lot of these players play club volleyball, and they know each other from the offseason. Kelly Soboda, the senior, will serve. And that just barely, that net can help you sometimes because it, it stops the momentum of the ball. Now, this has to be put over, and it is. That's the Libro right there in the yellow jersey, right? Uh, that's correct. And that was uh, hit into the net by Richie, so we're at 6 5 Carondelet. And the gym is packed out here today. There's a, a replay of it, you can see. That's twice now on each side we've had that happen. And the nice block. Wow, that was Glickman on the year. She has 17 blocks, second on the team to Lamette. That's correct. And you can see here Kelly Quinn hitting the ball pretty hard into the block. Although that ball could have been brought up by the Libro there. And if you saw, that was Lamette with her. So that's the one-two punch off that roof once again. Luquette, who's the, uh, the setter for Carondelet. Nice block and a, a Liberty point there. Luquette, just incidentally, while amazingly, they only have two people with assists. Luquette has 364. Jen Bauer, who comes in, has 21. No one else has an assist on their roster. That's correct. Liberty are using two setters in the lineup for strategy, and Carondelet using one. Yeah, they use Alvino and Cicchini, so. There's, now that was, you know, that's probably illegal in a, in a number of countries, that kind of play right there, Coach. <laughs> that's just downright nasty. That's right, she's almost unstoppable here. And she's just a sophomore. You know, she was a, a terror on the softball diamond last year, and she's just, a, uh, a sophomore here at Carondelet. She's got two more years and three more years to play baseball, which she'll probably start doing once the volleyball season's over. That was a nice dig by Glickman. And I don't think that ever got to number 22 of Liberty. 
Anderson. I think that was into the net as well. Nice. And off a great dig like that, you hate to see one of your hitters just hit that into the net like that. That's a great effort by the defender. Alvino will serve. And that's, now that's a back set, and that time Lamette, and that's her specialty. She does it in warm-ups all the time, but just didn't get enough on it. That's right. I think the set, the set was a little off there, and Lamette was just a little bit off balance hitting that one into the net. So as we mentioned, 8-8, eight to eight, you have to get first to 25, but you've got to win by two. That's correct. And now there's the back set, and um, could you have dug that one, Coach? Um, I don't think um, <laughs> 10 people on the court could dig that ball. That's if they were all lined up right there for the ball. <laughs> that, that's a great spike. That's one of the, we were talking about that yesterday when we talked about uh, this game. If you can get that kind of set at the net, unless you block it, you're, you're pretty much history. That's correct. It's almost unstoppable. Now Vino with a nice set, and that's Cicchini with the, uh, the kill on that one. And I'll tell you, right there, you saw two of the best players in Northern California do what they do best. That's right. You see Allison Cicchini, primarily a setter. She comes in here for the outside attack, usually called a four ball. Hits that versus a solo block for a kill. Great uh, replay there as well to show you that. That's the Libro who put that over the net. And a good block. I think it was Lamette with the block there, at the, and it's 10 to 9 for Andalette. That's right. You, you saw Allison Cicchini hit into the block with Lamette and Ali Benger here, penetrating over, putting the ball down. We'll talk a little bit more about Now, someone told me it was the Libero. You say it's the Libro. So, irregardless, uh, we will talk a little bit more about that. That's the person that wears the different colored jersey. Now, this has to be put over, and it is. Alvina will set in a nice block and off the roof and nearly off the roof again. Wow, this is a... Now, what was that call? Now, that call was a lift, and that, that meant that the ball came in, came at, at, at rest in the player's hands. So when she dove here, it hit in her open palm as opposed to right that one right there. there. Right okay. there, okay. it rested in her hands, and it's called a lift. And a service error. See, I'm listening, though. <laughs> 11 to 10. This game is pretty tight now. I think both teams are just trying, trying to find a, a rhythm on offense and defense. There have been some substitutions. We'll try to point them out to you. Uh, and that's a nice set right there. A good block and a save. And it's still in play. Now that call was pretty uh, was pretty tight there. It, 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 that I think that could have been a lift on either side. The referee used his judgment, called the lift on that play. All I can say is the game I watched the other day, they didn't call that ever. So <laughs> maybe the interpretation of that rule is a little different from umpire and referee as you go around the, the league. Oh, that's right. Those are judgment calls. That serve was out. So it's 12 to 11. Don't forget, if you're watching this game, we will have, and don't forget also Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria. Go to Best Pizza in the East Bay. Uh, thanks for the crew meal, guys. We'll have the Antioch-Pittsburgh football game for you right after tonight's game, which will be uh, taped on Saturday. That was Glickman who returned. Nice dig underneath enough to put this one over, and they do, and it's in. Coach, do they have a term for the little tap at the net, or is it just called a little tap? Uh, you can call that a little tap. A lot of players call that tips or roll shots. Those are controlled, controlled swings, usually for placement and accuracy. Ali Benger will serve here. Carondelet, a two-point lead in the first game. Nice dig. Cicchini sets, and it was to Richie, but that was either... There's a lot of play happening at the net that is not getting over the net in this game. Any explanation whatsoever? Yeah, I, I tell you, the, the passing pretty much dictates dictates the, the quality of the set, and, and if the pass is off, usually the set's pretty bad. Nice block. That was just finding an open area on the floor that time. That's right. In speaking with uh, Jerry Mix, the Colonel White coach before the match, one of his strategies tonight is to, to defend against that play, which is called a tip. He wants to defend against the tip right there. 14 to 12, Carondelet. There is no time limit in volleyball either, coach. That's one of the interesting things about it. You can go all night if you have to. I think that's out. 
That ball slightly out of bounds. No touch by Condolette players off the block. When you played in college at Illinois, who was the big power in the Big Ten back there in volleyball? Um, for, for the men, it was uh, Michigan State. Back set. Nice rally this time, and it has to go back over. That would have been the third hit. Luquette the set, and a now another, wow, this is a good one. And that's out. So I, Quinn was looking for something there. Maybe she thought she saw an opening, but uh, hit it out with her left hand. And that's kind of, with the left hand, you, you're probably not going to have as much control as you would with your right hand. That's right. As you can see, the set was a little too far out for her, and she had to use her left hand, place it out of bounds. I think they, the, uh, the Liberty fans thought that was played uh, with an illegal hand. And there was a tip and someone under the net that time. Uh, actually, that was a lift by the setter, although the play before that where, the, uh, where some of the spectators were thrown up in arms, that was actually legal play. That's called a double contact, and that's legal on the first contact that comes over the net. Yeah, I thought if the ball hits you like in your chest on a serve, it was uh, a point, but it's not. But, it, but on the on the return or the second one it would be. That's correct. Or third. 16 to 13, Carondelet. Little tip is played. The kit gets a lot of action in there in the middle. That's uh, a dig attempt that time by Alvino is uh, pushed wide, and now it's 17 to 13. Carondelet really playing well here in this first game. That's right. I think one of their strategies as well is to tip towards the setter, so she cannot set the ball. Well, I'd have to say, if you notice that, we've mentioned the height. They've done a good job of kind of neutralizing that because that was only one of the, maybe the second or third time the height has come into play for Liberty in the first game. And that's right. Carondelet uses a lot of finesse, a lot of placement with the ball, while Liberty has some very tall players, those trees, as you might call them, to put the ball away. Wow, that was blocked. That's the only way you can, you can stop her at the net. Nice dig. And a setup, but this will have to be played over. Alvino will set up Quinn. And that comes right back. And that's the one we talked about, Coach, where you don't want to set the other team up on the return. And that call was a back row attack. The ball is contacted by a back row player. And it is the Liberty ball. Now contacted by a back row player in front of what? The attacking line? That's correct. Okay, the attacking line is that middle yellow line that's there. Correct. It's called, also called the 10-foot line. And uh, that was hit directly into the net. Not a, not a great return that time, 17-16. So Liberty back in the game. And a timeout for Carondelet here. 17-16. Let's, let's, while we have this timeout, Coach, tell us a little bit about the Libro. That's one of the more interesting things in volleyball. Okay, the Libro. And from that last play that we just saw, we saw um, Carondelet's Libro. Sarah Drosba tried to hit that, attempt to hit that ball over the net, although she hit it into the net. And that's one of the last, last things that you want to see your team do is have the Libro who cannot attack the ball above the height of the net. That would be illegal. And you want the other players to be attacking that ball above the height of the net. Um, that is one of the that is one of the, the rules in place of the Libro. The Libro can also come in and out of the game at any time for any player. So she has unlimited substitutions. That was one of the first questions I had written down. What does the person do with the different colored jersey? And if you are the Libro or the Libro's parents, you might want to purchase a copy of this game. Shipping courtesy of UPS included. $25. Call 933-6264. We'll give you a VHS tape or a DVD. Now, one I, I had heard the other day, I was watching the Washington-Stanford match, which was a very big match, kind of like this one in a way, because Washington for years has been trying to get at Stanford, and this year beat them for the first time twice in, I don't know, forever, or however long it's been, because Stanford's the defending uh, NCAA champion, and they called it the libero. That's correct. Um, in, in America, um, some people call it the libero, some people call it the libero, tomato, tomato. Well, Seattle, there's a nice put, uh, put away by Lament. In Seattle, it's kind of considered Canada, too, so maybe they, you know, it's so dark and rainy up there, so maybe they, uh, they, they can use that term up there in Canada, real close to Vancouver. And there's another slide attack by Lamette, hitting the ball cross court for a kill. You know, one thing I wanted to ask you, too, is, and I know it's probably hard, but a lot of times those, those balls look like they could go out if you just let them go. Is it just impossible to let a ball like that go? Like that one right there. 
If that ball had went straight through, would it have landed in play? And it's, that could be very close. That could maybe be on the line, but if there's any doubt, play the ball. And also here, it's do you teach your hitters at the net to hit at the other player? Is that part of the, is it to avoid them or to hit at them? That could be part of the strategy, especially when you want to attack against a weaker defender. So it's 19-17 on that service error. And now Lamette is the server. Alvino was back, that was a nice back set, but then that little tip was played. And now we have to go back over. Now this is gonna be kind of nutty. <laughs> That's right, Liberty sending over a free ball. This should be an easy one for the Carnelette offense. Luquette will set up, a little tip is played. And now put back with the left and dug out nicely by Glickman. Lamette will come back over to the, the Liberty side and that is played to a spot where there wasn't a Liberty Lion. And that, really, that was kind of an easy play that you, you don't want to see a mistake made on a, in a situation like that, I would think. That's right, you can see uh, Condolette playing ball to the deep corner and the deep corners are one of the hardest places on the court to defend. Looked like it fooled that, uh, the Lion think That was Quinn on that one. Liberty calls timeout, 20 to 17 is the score. But of course, as we mentioned, Coach, you go five games, 25 points wins the game for the first four, and then 15 if you go all the way to five. The Comcast Game of the Week is brought to you by these great friends of the program. Rocco's Ristorani and Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. The pepperoni pizza is uh, dynamite there, Coach. I know you had some today. Contra Costa Clean Water Program and Mr. Funnelhead. Velocity Sports Performance in Concord. Brendan Theaters in Concord and Pittsburgh. Kurtz Equipment Rental in Pacheco. Peacock Expressions Gallery in downtown Antioch. Here's Coach Mix with his squad. Coach Mix coaching his first year on the varsity level here. He's been an assistant here. Went to College Park, graduated in 95, and played volleyball at Las Madonnas College, not far from where I, I live, and also a school that I attended and was thrown out of a number of times. That's right. Jerry has been around the block with several high schools in this area, has really brought his experience here to have a successful team. Mo uh, Molly and Nibali played at St. Mary's, we mentioned, and Sarah Dukes is an assistant coach, played at Stanford and That's was correct. on the... Uh, so those great Stanford squads down there in Palo Alto. Lamette to serve. Alvino will set. And the, that was another one. I don't think the ball is even getting to the other side blocker. That's about the fifth time I've seen that. That's right. And, and against a solo block, which means one blocker, you usually want to hit that over the net for a kill. But as you mentioned, possibly the way that it's being set up, now that is how you want to do it. That's All right. right. That was off of Laquette at the net. And a point for Liberty. It's 21-18. Here's a good uh, look at it. And ideally, you want to throw up two blockers versus attack. But Trondolet is using a special blocking scheme to block their primary hitters, which are on the other side of the court. And that is a service error. And there's been three or four of those here in this first game. That's right, I think both teams are using aggressive blocking strategy, or aggressive serving strategies here. I like when the guy throws it way up in the air and then jumps, and, and not many people can do that because it's very hard to do. Now there's another mistake by uh, setting up, basically setting up the other team to return. That's correct, you never want to see an overpass. And it looks like Liberty is going to get the point and the serve here. Because uh, uh, the, touch the net on that one, I believe. I don't know if we have a replay of that. We saw it. Uh, I, I think that was the call, though, Coach. The net was touched. So it's 22-19. That's a big point right there. And there's a... Is that really an ace? <laughs> Unfortunately, for the receiving team, that is really an ace. With an assist to the net. 22-20. to Chikini is serving. Riquette will set Blickman, and that's a nice put away that time. That's how you draw it up on the blackboard, right? That's right, and the first ball handled by Sarah Draws by the Libero. And the Libero handles the most balls that come over the net, therefore they usually get the most digs and passing. And Sarah Drozba does lead Carondelet with 107 digs, so our investment in you is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> 23 to 20, two points. Uh, Away for Carondelet, but that was a nice uh, kill that time by number 33, Katie Try. 
That ball went untouched. I believe Quanillette did not expect that attack from that side of the net. Oh, nice little tip, but dug out nicely. Liberty will have to send it over here, and they do. Drasba, Luquette will set up on a nice back set. Oh, and it's blocked and kept in. Is that going to land in, or that ball landed in? Oh, my, what a play. You could not dream up a play any crazier than that one, Coach. Great second efforts, first and second efforts, by the Cronulet team to keep that ball in play and fight for that point. Wow. It looked like that was uh, that one was going to be put away, and it would have been 23-22, Liberty with the serve. But uh, I, I don't, don't know which Carondela player it was, but one of them with the left hand just put it back over the net. She had to after two crazy hits, and it landed in. It was incredible. Uh, Amorosa Antique and Floral, Diablo Auto Sales, Jeffrey Hill, Doctors of Dentistry, GamePod Combat Airsoft, Antioch Opticians, Heidi Greg Vallejo out there, Images of Three Hair Salon, Recovery Carpet Care. Great friends of the program here on Comcast. That's why we get to do these games and bring them to you. We have uh, our game of the week in football, and this week will be week 10. It will close down our fifth season of football. And I don't think Coach uh, Gillarducci. Now, what, were, what are they uh, complaining about there? What was? Did they think that there was a second touch or something on one of those? Well, I think Coach Gillarducci believed that that ball was out of bounds. Oh, okay. That's a nice kill that time by Quinn, who once again kind of setting up the Carondelet return came to their side of the net. That's right, that's an overpass by the Carondelet defense and put the ball away on the outside. 24-22, so Carondelet wins this point, they win this game. So Liberty has to come up with a bit of a miracle here. They'd have to win five, uh, excuse me, four straight points to win. Alvino returns, draws by a nice dig, Glickman. And here's a little, nice little tip at the net, and another one, and a nice dig out that time by Glickman. Lamette will set up a little tip at the net. Alvino, this is a nice rally. And that's out, and that'll do it. So Carondelet wins the first match, a game of this match, 25 to 22. And we're gonna step aside for a couple minutes. We'll be back with game two after this here on Comcast. Looking for quality equipment rental with a helpful, friendly staff? Hertz Equipment Rental at Pacheco has over 4,100 pieces of reliable equipment to choose from, ready for delivery. Or if you're looking to purchase equipment, check out our pre-owned equipment sales list for super bargains on well-maintained pre-owned equipment. With Hertz, you have the right tool to get the job done. That's Hertz Equipment Rental at their new location, 30 South Buchanan Circle in Pacheco. Call Hertz today, 925-680-0316. It doesn't matter what sport you play. It doesn't matter what position you play. It doesn't matter whether you're turning pro or just starting out. It doesn't even matter how old you are. If you want to maximize your potential, you need Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance. Maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Quality fine art, collectibles, and framing. Peacock Expressions Gallery of Antioch has it all. A wide variety of custom framing to fit everyone's needs. A certified showcase gallery with unique art from Thomas Kincaid, Lennox Classics, Franz, Thomas Blackshear, Armani, Bradford Exchange, and more. From original art to posters, worldwide, national, and quality local art, where quality does not have to break the bank. Find that special gift for that special someone. Back at Carondelet High School, Dan Wall, Emerson Salonga, first game to Carondelet. Coach, if you were Liberty's coach right now, what would you be saying to your team? Well, if I was uh, Liberty's coach, um, I would I'd, I'd tell my players not to uh, not to let down their guard, still play consistently, still play aggressively. Although they've missed many serves by serving aggressively, I would stick to that formula to throw Carondelet's um, service receive off balance. As you can see, there's still a minute 59 to go. There's four minutes between games, so we're going to take another one-minute break, and we'll be back with game two from Carondelet after this. Great Mexican food, home of the famous margarita, and fun and food in a festive environment. That's Celia's of Antioch. 
For over 30 years, Celia's has served specialties like fajita supreme, camarones a la ranchera, and other great Mexican food that has brought people from around the area to eat. Every Thursday night is live music from Trio and Saturday night mariachis. That's Celia's of Antioch for great Mexican food. Since 1980, Fresky Air Systems Incorporated has been keeping Contra Costa cool and comfortable. With an expert crew of technicians and staff, let Fresky be your indoor comfort professionals. Our Lennox Signature Home Comfort Systems are designed to deliver efficient and economical air and heat for your individual needs. Air conditioning to heating, duct cleaning to emergency service calls, Fresky has you covered. From the homeowner to the commercial world, Fresky Air Systems Incorporated. Reliable and trusted service since 1980. Now, Coach, we talked a little bit about Liberty and what they did. Uh, if you were on the Cronulet side, what impressed you? What did they do well in that first game? Well, like I mentioned at the beginning of the match, uh, in talking with Jerry Mix, the Cronulet coach, he wanted to defend against Liberty's tip. And, and Liberty is, is, is tipping a lot, and the strategy to defend that is working great. I, I think that Cronulet has done a great job scouting and, and preparing for this match. They're picking up all the loose balls on the floor, playing what Jerry calls relentless defense. Now, not only do we switch sides, this is for all you volleyball uh, first-timers out there, but we switch benches as well. They all get up and move. It's, it, you don't do that in basketball when you switch sides at halftime. No, you don't do that. So you, do, this you want to be closer to the team. Right. So probably because, uh, and that's the thing about volleyball, it's the one game where there is no physical contact between players. There shouldn't be physical contact between players. Of all the major games that you watch, all the action literally takes place on one side or other of a net. Tennis and badminton would be, and ping pong would be the others, but I'm just saying, you know, in a team sport, this is really uh, kind of unusual. So you could pick everyone up and take them over there so you're on your side for what will probably be a 20 minute game. That's correct, and, and actually volleyball was invented as a non-contact sport as an alternative for basketball, a contact sport. Well, in some places. In you know, some places. When Shaquille O'Neal is playing, yes, it's a contact sport. So on the floor for Liberty here in, to start game two, Alvino will serve. Luquette the set, and Glickman puts that one. That's kind of what I was talking about. Now, some Condolette wants to know why, if that was tipped at the net, I think it hit the net and then went long, which would have put it out still. That's right. You can see it. You can see the now replay here. Right. Glickman on the way down and hitting that ball. That was that was close, but very close. Luquette, another nice set and a dig. Alvino will set up Quinn. Nice back set that time, and a nice block. I think it was blocked by Nicole Anderson, and it's two to nothing Liberty here. Also, just think of how many points you can have in a game, or how many you could have in a game. It's incredible. Just to, just to win, you have to have 75 if you win in three games. And there's a service ace and three to nothing. But if you go full five games all the way, you could have 115 points. That's correct. This game could take a long time. Alvino doing a nice job serving here. That's her fourth serve here to start this, this game, the second game. Carondelet won the first game. Nice dig. Oh, they got to put it over on that. Would have been the third hit. Luquette. Nice block. Oh, that was Chikini with the block. Luquette sets again. That's a nice dig. That's the Libra. That's uh, Amanda Humphrey. And that time, Liberty had no answer for it, and it's 3-1. to one. And I think uh, the rest of the Liberty players were anticipating that ball to be off of the ceiling and bouncing to, well, somewhere else as they hesitated there. Very, very uh, interesting, uh, the, the, the low roof here. I think that's uh, one of the more interesting things that we're, we're having to deal with tonight. Oh, that was a nice block, but a nice dig by Cicchini on the far side. And then she kind of took a little bit off that one. Oh, and a nice play that time. That yeah, was uh, Ali Banger who made that play. Actually, it was Svoboda. That was, uh, yes, that player looking like she was going to set at the last minute, tipping the ball over the net. Three to two, Liberty. Far side, Shakini, and that's out. When I see that, I often wonder, too, if you can't hit the ball at the net, 
and, and drive down, is there really a purpose in trying to put it over that hard? Because it seems like it's just going to go out. Because with the way you have to send it back over the net, it's almost impossible to get it in. Would you agree with that? That's correct, and especially with a smaller team like Crondelet, their, their specialty is finesse and ball placement. Now, see, that was closer to the net, thus easier to put away by Anderson. And this celebration that the bench does is something, it's crazy. They're, they celebrate every point. That's right. It's, it almost seems like it's the end of the match. Every, every point. That's right. <laughs> Four to three in the second game. Oh, nice dig that time by Humphrey. Oh, and that's dug out by Quinn. This is Try. Now Carondelet will have to send it over. Now that was a nice ball that time. Alvino, far side, Try, tries to put it away, and she does put it away. It can use her name in many different ways there, Coach. That's right, she's a very dynamic player, picking up most balls and also getting a lot of kills. And as you can see, as you can see, the Libro made, made a little error in judgment, rotating to the wrong spot on defense. Those are the kind of things you can point out that I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Ali Banger that time uh, did not get a lot of uh, oomph on that ball, so to speak, and it went into the net, and it's 6-3. to three. Number eight, I think for one of the first times maybe, Jen Bauer into the ball game. Can you call it a ball game? You can call yeah, it, it a ball game. A ball game. Alvino back set, and Cicchini with the uh, kill and a beautiful dig that time. And blocked at the net and dug again by Carondelet. I'd have to say Carondelet playing one of the better matches of their year out here tonight so far. And that, yeah, that, they tried valiantly on that point, Coach, but uh, finally they just ran out of gas, I think, in a timeout for Coach Mix after we see a replay of it. And that is great positioning by the Carondelet defender. Although not digging the ball high enough, players couldn't get to their spot. Brendan Theaters, Movie Magic, and Cochran of Pittsburgh. Of course, Jarhead is out. And with your hairdo, Coach, you could have started in that movie. I, I don't know if you, uh, if any of the guys in the truck picked up on that, but uh, <laughs> Jamie Foxx and a number of folks. Uh, also, Chicken Little, which all of our crew could have starred in if they were uh, around at that time. Hertz Equipment Rental and Pacheco. Now, that we don't have the scissor lift tonight here in the gym, but we'll have it on the football field for you on, on Saturday. Peacock Expressions Gallery, corner of 3rd and G Streets in Antioch. Velocity Sports Performance. Are you familiar with them? They do a great job training young athletes. I am very familiar with them. A lot of our uh, club players train in the off-season with Velocity Sports. Now, I'm a big fan of the mascots, Coach, and I, I, that's a pretty good line here today. I think he, she has a couple of handlers with her as well, don't they? That's right, and in absence is, is the uh, Carnelette Cougar. I haven't seen the Cougar. I have not seen the Cougar. Liberty 7, Carondelet 3 here in the second game. Carondelet won the first game, 25-22. Oh, nice play. Try. I'll tell you what. I don't know if they made a change in strategy, but Try was not in that position earlier in this game, and since they put her there, she's killed a number of balls. That's correct, and I think that's part of that team's um, trying to find a rhythm, trying to find some hot hitters earlier in this game. Yeah, they uh, heard from the crowd on that one. They thought it was, uh, is that true to let? Or they call that a lift, although a that lift. ball was clean off of the Libro's hands. I, don't, I just don't know unless you actually like stopped it that it would make a lot of sense not to let that go through. That's right. I know on the beach when we're playing, about 5 o'clock when the sun's going down, we let that stuff go. <laughs> Alvino, Cicchini, now it was beautiful right there. That was the first time we've seen her actually succeed on that little tip play. And there she's mixing it up. She's a power player, and there she mixed it up a little finesse tip in the middle of the court, which is something that Carondelet wants to try to do in their, in their strategy today. Number 25 for Liberty, Melissa Ford. We'll see some action here in the second game. Nine to four, Liberty. And a delay, but we're ready to go. Luquette back set to Lamette. And like I said, Coach, uh, 
a felony in a number of counties here in California, <laughs> especially if the ball hits you. That is a great play by the Condolet offense, swinging Lamette in the back and putting away for the cross-court kill. Even with two blockers, it's very hard to defend against that play. Now, do you call that right there? Do you know, or do you, do you or is that something the players on the court know and do? Uh, that's something that players on the court know and do. Alvina will set up Cicchini, and she puts one away, makes it 10 to 5. And that time, Cicchini puts the ball down the line. That's where the Conalette Libro, Sarah Drosba, dug one earlier tonight, although she stays to the middle of the court trying to read her shot. I think that's my favorite play, is the back set and then the kind of leap and kind of roll around and leap. It's kind of like a backdoor in basketball. <laughs> that's right, very similar. That service error will make it 10 to 6, and now Carondelet will have substitutions. And it oh, looks like there's... I'm just going to say, Coach, a full gym here tonight. Kind of impressive. Go ahead. That's right. It looks like we have a matchup here. Uh, one of the substitutions not allowed for Condolette. They have a short blocker here on the right side. And they went right after it. They went right after for the kill. Easy kill. I think they're going to yep. make a substitution yep. here. Yep. That was, uh, that was very impressive, not only for you to see it, but for them to actually execute this. Watch. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing that a lot of people probably don't know, that at least until they get to your level of expertise, is to know on the rotation and how substitutions go. That's a nice left-handed putback by Alvino that makes it 12-6. to six. And I think this is the biggest lead that Liberty has had in either game. That's right. And I think what you'll see that uh, you'll see Liberty uh, serving strategy be more aggressive here to try to run, run away with some points. Katie tries the server. And into the net for a service error, so now 12-7. to seven. And that, that's the thing about the... In the old days, this, that didn't kill you at the point. Now, it does, not only do you get a point for that, you get a point for any any time there's a score, you get a point. That's right, and you also lose what we call momentum during this game. Absolutely. Now this, I was going to say, if they would have had an opportunity, we'd have to put that one back over. That would have been the third uh, hit, but the Cicchini knocked it out of bounds, and now it's 12-8. to eight. Oh, that was that was illegal. <laughs> that was downright nasty. That's a great heads up play by the Liberty setter, Allison Chichini, right into what we call the campfire of the Conrad defense. Everyone just sitting and watching. Do they roast marshmallows and stuff like that in the, the camp, that's the campfire area? That's part of the joke. Oh, and that's a an ace. I wonder if they have a, con a contest at the end here for the most elaborate celebration. I've seen some that involve like more than five movements for some places. Very interesting. Oh, and that, there's that. You have a term for this, right? That's right. That's called an overpass. An overpass. And, and you can tell that uh, I, I think that the Condolette, Condolette Libro is going to take most of those passes next time. And it looks like a Liberty player was in the net, Condolette to serve. And until today, Coach, the only thing I really knew about overpasses is when they tear them down in Pittsburgh and I can't drive across them. <laughs> oh. That was a mistake at the net by Benger, and it's 15 to 9. The yeah, timing problem by uh, Allison Benger out here on the four ball. She'll probably clean that up pretty quickly as she lines up on the right side. Yep. So that was sent out by Glickman. And now it's 16 to 9. A clear momentum change here in the second game as, as Liberty is scoring points in strings. Alvino serves. Drasba. This is Luquette. When it, it seems to go, when it goes from Drasba to Luquette, they have a, a pretty good uh, chance at scoring. That's when right. It, when then. it goes off of three or four other players, it, that's when things get uh, kind of dicey. There's a lock, and it did not, uh, that didn't work at the net. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, that's right. When the, when the Libro handles the ball first, it's usually a pretty good pass. Is that is that the object of the Libro? Are they supposed to be the better receiver on the team? That's correct. They handle the ball the most. They handle the ball the best. That's why they're usually the shorter players, the quickest players. Kind of like the point guard best. That's correct. 17 to 9 Liberty. Let's say hello to some other great friends of the program here. Before we do that, we'll let you purchase a copy of tonight's game, shipping courtesy of UPS included. 
Call 933-6264. Ask for Metal Matt. $25. Freshy Air Systems is a great friend of the program in Antioch. Paramount Technology, the computer wizards behind Tower Records and Concord. Jose Pontiac Cadillac GMC, Pittsburgh on Auto Row. Great friends of the program, always helping us out getting this uh, programming on for you all throughout the school year. Also, Amorosa Antique and Floral. Now, tonight, you're watching this game. Then we'll have the Pittsburgh Antioch football game. Pittsburgh needs to win that game to win the BBL championship outright. It's an 86 big little game. I don't know if you're familiar with that rivalry coach in football. Oh, yeah. Antioch and Pittsburgh, uh, one of the best rivalries in high school football in all of the United States. And then after that medal, Matt will have, oh, what is this? I think the water polo practice is out. That's an interesting. Uh, that is interesting, especially here at a private school. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Seventeen nine Liberty. Luquette will set up Blickman. It's blocked at the net by Chikini. Another point. So Liberty really starting to show what they do well here in the second game. That's right. And Cronolet making some ball handling errors and forcing a bad set to the outside hitter. And that was, I think it was. A Carondelet point. It was very close out on the line. Who are the, the people that actually make those calls? Are those like junior varsity or freshman players that they kind of draft in to do that? Those players are usually junior varsity or freshman players that are called line judges, and they are, their job is to primarily watch the line and touches off the block. 18-10, Liberty here, second game. Nice dig that time. Not almost a roof shot, but... Uh, Played again by Crondelet. This is set up. Alvino. And that time, I, I were they going back set and, and kind of fool their own players, do you think, on that one, Coach? I think they could have. A little miscommunication there. And there, there is the back set to Cicchini and put away nicely. And right before that, it looked like the same play, but she went to it. She was trying to go to number 22, Nicole Anderson, and Anderson was kind of surprised. You can see now this is the kill. Right, that's the second shot in the row where Allison Cicchini has gone down the line for the untouched kill. You know one thing, Coach, I noticed on Liberty's roster, of all the girls, not one of them was born in Brentwood. And it kind of plays into the fact that now Brentwood is this community where a lot of people are moving because of affordable housing. And now one girl was actually born there. I thought it was kind of an interesting fact. That's a good observation. And they put that back over that. They kind of were deciding that. <laughs> I think it's the third time. And that is returned wide. And now it's 20 to 10. Quinn serves. Luquette. Now part of Liberty's serving strategy here is not to serve the libero, Sarah Drosman, in the middle of the court. They're aiming towards the corners of the court. And here's the kill by Cronel. Oh, here's the block by Liberty. That's uh, number four is Christina Berry in for Carondelet. Now number 29, Caitlin Fontana, is in. Now, I would say at this point, they have a very small front line. If you look out there, they're taking the Lamette's not out there right now, and only Soboda is really the, the biggest player out there. Yes, I think uh, Coach Mix here is uh, almost cashing in his chips for this game, preparing for the next one, well, the rest of starters. And then right as I said, I'm, maybe I'm starting to get a little bit, Coach, but Lamette is back on the floor now. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Another roof ball. I wonder how many roof balls have come into play tonight. Back set. That time. Was that hit twice? Uh, that was not hit twice. This, that hit was uh, attacked into the net. The set was a little low for Allison. Uh, you can tell that she wanted to hit this ball down the line again. I thought they actually had whistled that dead long before she had actually hit it. But 21 to 12. Liberty still a safe nine point lead here in the second game. There's a little tip. Oh, nice dig though over in the corner. Wow, that was a moonshot. Alvino, Chikini sends it back, and now Carondelet, this is Luquette. Nice rally again this time. Alvino to try, blocked nicely, dug, and now Chikini, oh, what a nice return that time. And that ball, 
pursued by Allison Cicini to be played over back over the net is out of bounds as the ball went around the it antenna. It has to go back over the net inside the antennas. That's correct, completely inside. And there's the pursuit, great effort, ball just wide over the antenna. Timeout on the floor, I believe Liberty called this one, 21 to 13. They lead here in game two, the Coronelette won the first set. The Comcast Game of the Week is brought to you by these great friends of the program. Rocco's Restaurant and Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Velocity Sports Performance in Concord. GamePod Combat Airsoft. Diablo Auto Sales of Antioch. Jose Pontiac in Pittsburgh. Paramount Technology in Concord for the Computer Wizards. Great crowd here tonight, great atmosphere here. Volleyball, of course, has taken on a uh, much greater profile after the Olympics last year. And of course, uh, everyone knows who Misty May and, uh, and uh, Carrie Walsh are now. I actually had the pleasure of seeing Carrie Walsh play basketball and volleyball in high school back at Archbishop Mitty back in the 90s. But of course, this game is a lot different than that game. That's correct. This game, uh, this game has become very, very large, especially here in Northern California. A lot of players, again, a lot of players involved in club volleyball in the offseason to improve their skills for the high school season. Well, I always thought, you know, it's one of those games that when it comes around every four years and is played, and I'm talking about in the Olympics at the six-person level, the team level inside, something I always watch and always enjoy, but you don't get to see a lot of it. One thing that's kind of helped now are the, the proliferation of sports uh, channels on, on cable and uh, you got the uh, college network and all these different networks where you can see college volleyball where in the past you might see one game a year. That's correct. Exposure has gotten really big in terms of uh, girls volleyball and collegiate volleyball. 22 to 13 after that point and now Liberty will serve. This is Melissa Ford. To Asbaugh, to Luquette, to Lamette. And a block, but trying to let point. As I said, I bet you if you map that out, Coach, that play has worked about 80% of the time tonight. That's right, and the Liberty blockers blocking that ball. However, the ball went into the antenna, out of bounds, point Condolette. We'll be here in this gym in January, at the end of January, for the Carondelet girls basketball squad against Deer Valley, which should be one of the feature games in the BBL uh, this year. Of course, Jane Appel, uh, the great uh, center for the Carondelet Cougars. We'll have to see them twice next year. That was another nice play by Lamette at the net. And we're at 22-15. Now, I would have to say that if Liberty does not win this game, that things will look very dire for them after having a nine-point lead. Oh, that's right. This is this. They want to put this away right now. It'll be a wonderful comeback for Carondelet, especially here in their own gym. Alvino, that's Chikini, little touch, played back. Chikini digs, Alvino will set, back set, Chikini tipped. That's Drasba to Lequette, and once again, oh, and that time Lamette tried the little touch pass, but it was dug out. This is try, oh, into the black hole of the Carondelet defense that time. That's right, you can tell the outside hitter there where she was supposed to be playing defense, she was preparing for her attack, and she let that ball drop just right in front of her. That must be uh, something that's neat to try to, to do, is when you see all the defenders shuffle around like that to be able to pick that one spot on the floor. That's right. And there was an attempt to pick that one spot out by Lamette there, just out of bounds. So this is the uh, game point, 24-15 Liberty. They could tie it up here, which would guarantee that we'd at least see four uh, games tonight. And that's an ace, and that'll do it. So 25-15 score in game two, and now we're all tied at one. And uh, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be back with game three action for you here on Comcast after this. Hi, I'm Rocco Bialy, and this is my family. I'm Dante. I'm Dominic. And I'm Nina. For the past five years, Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria has been the proud sponsor of the Comcast High School Game of the Week. As a neighborhood restaurant, being part of our community has been very important to my family and staff. I'd like to personally invite you to become part of our family. Great pizza, great pasta, and great people. Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria, a part of your community. Tonight's Comcast Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from the dentistry offices of Keith White and Brett Anoni DDS. 
Keith White and Brett Anoni have been serving Central Contra Costa County for years with a personal commitment to their patients in uncompromising dental care with an atmosphere of comfort and experience. With state-of-the-art sterilization techniques and equipment, which includes digital x-rays, their staff of highly trained professionals will make your every visit one you'll look forward to in the future. That's Keith White and Brett Anoni DDS and staff, State Farm Agent Roger Fernando, located in the Crow Canyon Commons Shopping Center in San Ramon. When a coach understands the player's strengths, developing a winning strategy is easy. That's also true with State Farm Agent Roger Fernando. Roger knows your insurance and financial situation isn't exactly like anyone else's. But like a great coach, Roger and his team of professionals create a strategy to meet your individual needs. See State Farm Agent Roger Fernando and his team at 3211A Crow Canyon Place in San Ramon the 19th Hole Casino at West Tregalis Road. Established in 1967, the 19th Hole has been completely renovated. Open seven days a week, they feature Texas Hold'em, No Bust 21 Blackjack, Low Ball, High Low Split, Pai Gao, and provide Kino and Lottery Sales. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, beginning at 5.30 p.m., it's a No Limit Texas Hold'em shootout with winner take all. Friday and Saturday night is karaoke at 9 p.m., and Sunday at 9 a.m. is the NFL ticket on all the 14 TVs. And come play in the Sunday No Limit Texas Hold'em Tournament. That's the 19th hole behind the post office in Antioch. Make big messes no longer a problem. Experience the difference in a real professional. Randy's Carpet Care. Improve your indoor living to a clean, healthy environment. IICRC certified master cleaning specialist in carpet, upholstery, odor control and stain removal, owner operator and family friendly. Call today to reserve your spot. Randy's Carpet Care, we exist to serve you. Call 925-518-1088. Bridgehead Self Storage of Antioch, located behind Kmart off Highway 4 and East 18th Street. Bridgehead Self Storage has from five by six to 10 by 40, 24 hour security units for those extra things you just can't fit in the garage anymore. RV and boat storage spaces are also available, along with packing and moving supplies. That's Bridgehead Self Storage of Antioch, behind Kmart, off Highway 4. The new Mecca Cafe on Railroad Avenue in downtown Pittsburgh, serving Contra Costa and beyond for over 30 years. Eat in or order to go. Guillermo and his crew cook with pride. Rock Bottom Records in Antioch. We buy and sell used DVDs and CDs, seven days a week. Listen to any compact disc in the store in one of our in-store listening stations. Special order millions of discs or DVDs on the Muse on our in-store computer that can find just about any release on Earth. T-shirts, posters, black lights, stickers, and one of the biggest selections of cassettes anywhere. This year celebrating our 25th year anniversary. Antioch Opticians glasses and contact lenses in the Rayleigh Shopping Center on Lone Tree Way in Antioch. Since 1973, Antioch Opticians has carried over 3,000 frames to meet your special needs and repair broken frames. They have their own in-house laboratory for fast, accurate service. One hour service in most cases. That's Antioch Opticians, 3714 Lone Tree Way in Antioch. Thanks again to all of our friends from the Comcast Game of the Week. Emerson, was there a point in that uh, second game where you felt the momentum sh shifted to Liberty and what, and what caused it? Well, I tell you, I think it's from the very first point of that second game. Liberty not making very many ball handling errors off the serve, allowing the setter to place the ball in the attacker's hands. The uh, starting uh, players back out on the floor for both squads here, except for I think both of them now are using the, uh, the Libro or Libero or Big L, whatever you want to call it. That's right. And I think that, that set dump right here by Alvino caught Trondolette a little bit off surprise again, placing that ball right in the middle of the camp. She fire. doesn't usually play up that close to the net. She's a, more the assist person out there. Oh, and there's no one there. That was more by accident, I think, that time. As uh, Glickman had a, a nice uh, attempt at a kill, it happened to hit right in the hands of Try, and as she pushed it back, it pushed just enough to get over the net and fall where no one was. That's right, that's usually a mistake, but ends up point for Liberty. Alvina with the back set, and 
You know, that, that's, that, that in, a, in New York, that's called sopranoing it, Coach, because you can forget about it. There's nothing, I mean, I, I watch this. I mean, there, there's not many people on the planet outside of. Uh, <laughs> That is a wonderful hit. That's a wonderful Man, hit. Man, I think, I think any level, that, that ball is just not playable. So it's three to nothing. And once again, Liberty has gotten out to a good lead to start the game. Now Vino, that's Quinn. Now back, and Quinn cannot dig that out. And Crondelet gets on the scoreboard here. And that ball hit high off the blocker's hand, lands short in front of the Liberty defenders. Of course, the interesting thing about this is, is that since there are no defensive players on your side of the net, you would think that at some point you could run the plays you want to run, and it just doesn't turn out that way. That's correct. The, the play that uh, obviously Liberty is real good, uh, Ron Lett's real good at, is that back set to Lamette. They're not able to get that all the time. She's not even in the game right now. That's Laquette. And that was a nice hit that time by Barry. Little tip. Laquette will set up again. Barry on the far side. And she kills that one off Alvino on the far sideline. Makes it three to two. And the Cronulet attacker hitting the ball down the line. That's, I believe, their first shot down the line tonight. And Liberty was expecting that cross court. Banger serves an ace. And it's three to three, so they came right back. They didn't do that in the second game. They got down and never really got back in it. That's right. In the second game, Cronolet made some serving errors, which allowed Liberty to make some point scoring runs. Wow. Uh -oh, off the roof, roof ball. And that time they couldn't do anything with that one either. Once it hits the roof, it's like chaos ensues. That's correct. <laughs> Whoever the ball is coming to, you better go get that ball. They look like ants, and then ants, once you spray poison on them, once the ball hits the roof, they just all scatter around trying to get to the ball. You never know where it's going to go. It's crazy. Nice serve that time. Alvino will set up, and that ball hits the net. That was number 22, Anderson. A little hesitation there by Luquette, not able to balance out the defense here as the ball lands off to the sideline. The net had a little bit to do with that one, too. That's right. Uh, this is one of those balls. Yep, th that's, that's that overpass you like to talk about. Alvino sets up Anderson, but they play it back, and now draws. But now that's, that's where the Libro cannot contact the ball above the net, but can contact it back over the net. That's correct. And it, uh, it appears that someone either touched or was below the net, and Crondelet's come all the way back to take a 5-4 lead here in game three. That's right. It, the Liberty dig too tight for Allison Chichini to get to before she'd set the ball. Great dig, however, just a little close. Set her in the net. Alvino, back set, blocked. Nice play by Carondelet to keep it alive. Barry sends it back over. There's Alvino setting again. The net once again becomes into play. And was that your lift on that one, or was that just a net violation? Well, those, those first contacts are usually a judgment call, but that ball looked like a double contact, which would be legal right there. That ball would contact it twice on the first contact. That's legal. You mean it hit like one hand and another hand to the same person? That's correct. 5-5, five, five, Alvino again. And that time, Carondelet gets the point. Alvino runs the show just like a great point guard does in basketball. You know, when they, she, she, she's controlling everything from the middle of the floor. That's right, and that's, that's attested to uh, Liberty's ball handling right now. They're doing a great job handling that first contact, delivering the ball to Alvino. Six to six, tied at one, game three for the BVL championship, uh, especially for Liberty. If they win tonight, they'll win it outright. Nice dig. They, that time, Lamette didn't get enough on that pass, but somehow it worked out anyway. That pass did not lead her to the net. She had to just play it over, but it kind of I think it surprised the defense as well. Yeah, that's a very athletic move, smart move by Kyle Lamette, placing that ball again to the corners of the court where it's very hard to defend. 7-6.
Cougars here. That was Lacuna serving. Oh, that ball had some nice English on it. Looked like it was going out, and it just kind of took a nice spin down as try. And she's done that a couple times tonight, Coach. That's right. I think the uh, the attack here had a little help from the block, allowing a little more topspin for the ball to come right back into the court. Nice attack by Liberty. And the serve receive, serve receive errors continue to manifest themselves in the Cronulet offense as they can't get a ball to the setter. Here's one. And that time, once again, the pass not where it should be, the, the kill into the net. And we've seen that a number of times now. I don't remember seeing it a lot in, in, in past uh, games. But, That's uh, right, especially in game one, Cronulet right now is playing a very out of system volleyball. And that's where the net helps you. It's like Katie Try is serving, and that one, once it hits that net, and it's kind of, it's a weird thing because unless you read it that it's going to hit the net, you, you're kind of set back. That's right. You, there's only one person up near the net when that happens. When she gets up above the net, it very seldom is... Uh, good news for the other team. That's correct. <laughs> and Kyle Amet, you see, coming in around for the front one. And previously in this game, she's been hitting behind the setter for the slide. Switches it front, run for, front one for a kill. God forbid what she'll be doing when she's a senior. And there's a nice service ace that time, right in the middle of the, their, their uh, defensive alignment. That's right. And big point for Condolette, tying the match at nine. Oh, nice tip, but uh, nice dig that time by Glickman. And that is a double contact by the Cronolette middle blocker. You usually don't see middle blockers set the ball, and that's probably one of the reasons why. Ten nine Liberty. Luquette. Nice block at the net. Alvino will set up Quinn. Nice dig by number seven, that's Lacuna. Sends it back over, and Liberty not able to control that one, and now it's well tied at 10. That's right, now Cronolet seems to be back on track, playing in-system volleyball, passing and digging balls to the middle of the court, and makes, which makes the setter's job much more easier to set attackers so who can put the ball away for the kill. Chikini with her back to the net, which doesn't happen a lot with her. She's usually playing with her you know, uh, looking towards the opposite uh, zone, and that time, uh, kind of a crazy play. Yep, and right into our cameraman, which is probably not as, didn't hurt as much as some of the football guys running over our cameraman on the field. Now this has to be sent over, it would have been the third hit. Looks like both teams are playing out of system volleyball here. Nice tip that time, though, by Nicole Anderson to put that one away, and it's 11 to 10. Now, normally you would see the left back player be the libero here. And the middle blocker tipping right where the libero should be. Alvino serves. Luquette sets. Glickman. And that's gonna that's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I thought maybe the roof might have come into play on that one, coach, but it didn't. And it must be weird if you play here, and then you go play at Deer Valley, which has a hundred foot roof, and you probably never come in contact at all. That's right. Sometimes the gym play a vital role in, in how you play. In, in this gym, it's, it's very enclosed, not a lot of space. Alvino sets at the net, Cicchini. Oh, what nice putback that time. This will have to be played at the net, and they actually are ruling what, a, a let or a contact? That, that's a lift call by Cicchini as she digs, uh, she tries to dig her attack to the setter. Let's take a look at it here. Right here, here's her attack. Here's the overpass, and there's the lift. Caught her by surprise. Now, what about that makes that a violation? About that, uh, the, the ball actually comes to rest in the player's hands. And the ball should be re rebounded or reflected without coming to rest. And that's, again, usually a judgment call. I was going to say, and a human can judge that how. <laughs> it's almost instantaneous. I guess you just have to be used to seeing it. Right, usually a lot of experience. Because really, when you say rest in someone's hands, you anticipate that you're like almost holding onto the ball. You're not even holding onto the ball. That's right, and the ball coming to complete stop as well. 
So Liberty takes the timeout down 13 to 11 here in this third game, tied at one. And this has been a lot of fun. I'm glad that you came out with us. It's uh, nice to work with you for the first time. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, maybe this we can do this again uh, next time. Don't forget to purchase your copy uh, of this game, shipping courtesy of UPS included. Call 933-6264. Now, you're over at Castro Valley High School, but you're, you're the tennis coach. That's correct. I am the tennis coach. I was coaching uh, volleyball at San Ramon Valley High. Just got the job at Castro Valley High, and along with that came the head tennis coach. And you teach what, boys PE? I teach freshman PE, bowling, and weightlifting. Wow. That must be fun, that 8 o'clock bowling class. <laughs> I know we were still at the bowling alley sometimes when I was in 10th grade, but that's another story <laughs> entirely. 13 to 11, Carondelet, Cicchini with the little uh, tap that is dug out at the net and played into the net by one of the Carondelet players, so a point to Liberty. That's right, you can see the uh, Carondelet, Carondelet and Servicey replacing the Libero in the middle of the court, hopefully to handle this ball, and she does. Oh, nice block, and dug out. And, wow, that was nice. Alvino, set, tip, Luquet. This is Glickman to Barry. Barry with a touch, and it's blocked by Anderson nicely. And we're all tied at 13. On that the, was one of the nicer points of the whole match. That's right. On that last play, Liberty is placing the ball to the setter. The setter has no other option to place the ball to a non-setter. And the setter setting the ball too tight, very hard for attacker to hit the ball. This time, Carondelet calls a timeout with the uh, third game tied at 13. Want to tell you a little about some of the players that have played here that you might remember. We talked about Alicia Powers, who's out there right now on the on the floor wearing the tie dye shirt. She's at Cal in her senior year. Caitlin Lawson is at Pepperdine, and Nicole Mosier at Seton Hall all played volleyball for Carondelet for Liberty. Krista. Houseman is at Loyola Marymount, and Lauren LaFlamme. There's a good name for you at Tennessee. And I only know that because I, you know, I go to the hockey games and I know all those French Canadian names, coach. And both teams here have used their first timeout, one timeout remaining in this game. So you get two timeouts each game. That's correct. Two so timeouts. You could have ten timeouts in a match. Barry's played a pretty uh, important role since she's come into the game at outside hitter, but at that time it was blocked, but blocked out of bounds, and it's 14 to 13. That's usually the spot that uh, Lamette plays, and now Lamette is back in the game as they rotate uh, out the uh, the Libro draws, but is out of the game. But as you pointed out, they use her more to receive serve than to to when they're on the, the attack. That's correct, and and one of the uh, one of the jobs as Libro again is to pass and make some defensive plays, but the Libro cannot serve. And that is out. Let me ask you a question, and I'm not uh, picking on little people, but I've noticed that the Libro is usually a smaller person. Is that what you try to, is that the, the position on the floor you take that person who maybe isn't going to be as good around the net and make them into a passer? That's correct. With the introduction of the Libro as a position, has really opened up the game, not just for tall people anymore, but for the shorter people. I think Randy Newman probably enjoys that as well. <laughs> Look at the, now this one has to go over. I think that was too many back sets in a row there. And that's into the net again. That's Try, who's had pretty good success at the net with the uh, those big spikes. That time, sp spike it right into the net. And that ball coming over your right shoulder is awfully tough for any attacker to hit over the net as Liberty is playing out of system volleyball now. Let's see if they can get back in system here. They didn't need to. Service error, Carondelet. Yep. 15 all. So we've really kind of had two. We've had the first game pretty much, I thought Carondelet played better, dominated. Liberty definitely dominated. And in this game, it's like you're just right there. Both of them playing, making some good plays, making some mistakes. That's right. Some unforced error here, not allowing teams to gain momentum. I think you're seeing tonight, though, too, that Carondelet might be a, a little bit better than they've been talked about, and because Liberty's talked about as the big power, and uh, you know, with the uh, with being the Division One champions, but uh, especially this year. In past years, obviously, Carondelet's won a lot of championships, but this is supposed to be Liberty's year. That's right. And after watching tonight, I think that they're they're pretty evenly matched, even in here at, at 2005. Tied at 16. Nice play by. Quinn, now you can go over the net 
and tip the ball, but you can't touch it or play under it. Right? That's correct. When you're attacking the ball, you can, especially on a block, you can reach across the net and touch the ball. 17-16 Liberty, that's a, that serve is out. And now it's 17 off. And you could never have this score in a, in a Liberty Cronulet football game. That's right. That's because Cronulet doesn't play football. But De La Salle and Liberty maybe, maybe, maybe once in the first quarter at Liberty De La Salle is 17-17. That ball is uh, returned out by Ritchie. And now a one point lead for Cronulet. And as you can see here, Cronulet playing with no libero as she's not allowed to serve. Kyle Lamette back to serve. And that one just in. So we're tied at 18. This one just back and forth seesaw fair here. Of course, for those of you that might not know, Carondelet is the sister school to De La Salle, which is located just to our right. Of course, the Spartans uh, will be in the uh, North Coast section playoff. You see another service error. There's been a lot of service errors, especially in this game. And that's right, a lot of service errors. I believe that the strategy for both teams is to serve a little more aggressively to throw both teams out of system. Does fatigue play into it at all at this point? I'm, sh I'm sure it can. These rallies have been going a long time. I'm sure players get really tired as that ball goes out of bounds. Point on the left. Now it's 20 to 18. Another thing to point out to folks that maybe haven't followed volleyball, the ball has to be entirely out. If it hits the line, it's in. Correct? That's right. Tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. Call 933-6264. Let us know what you think about this. This is the first time we've done this. When we do basketball in the winter, we're going to do some soccer games as well, and then we'll probably have perhaps maybe even a rugby game for you in the, uh, the springtime, and maybe lacrosse, as that ball just, just, that was one of those ones where you let it fall, and you, you gambled the wrong way, because it fell in. That's right, as a libero, you never want to see a, a free ball as that was, as that were land in front of you and in the court right there, and Sarah Droswell is not happy about not making that play. Dug nicely, Laquette, that's a back serve to Banger, and she returns it, and now this is Quinn. Cross court, Banger again, dug nicely. That was by Sam Mayberry, we haven't called her name much tonight, she's in the ball game. Banger again blocked, and then put back, and then off the roof, and this is a crazy point. And a nice kill that time by Lacuna. And I believe it was Quinn who went down to try to dig that out. Didn't get it. It's 21 to 19. Actually, that was Banger. Nice job by Cronulet to maintain composure during that during that extended rally to put that ball away. Alvino cross court Chikini. That's draws ball with the dig. Laquette with the set. Barry blocked at the net. Alvino once again. Cross court Quinn. And then that kind of, they were crossed up there on that one, who to go. Let me ask you a question, Coach, we had a little break. If you, if, if Drosba, who obviously is very good at receiving serve, if, if that's the first, why do you serve to it? Well, sometimes players just want to get the ball in the court. Are there some people that just are, aren't the best servers and the whole object is not to, not to mess up the serve? That's right, <laughs> like that one, uh, just players just want to get the ball in the court and not make a mistake, and they just serve aim for the middle of the court, and that's where the Libero is. Oh, here we go. Oh, now, that was almost a roof and basket shot that time. But well, see, Carondelet's better at that. They have they have played the roof a lot better. And there's a nice little tip and another point for Liberty, and it's tied at 21. Oh, this is a great game here. But if you had a person that could serve really well, would that be your object to serve away from the uh, the Libra? That's correct. You want you don't want to serve a Libra generally. Ever since I've mentioned that, I think it's like the Libra's a magnet to the ball. Nice dig by Mayberry, cross court, Cicchini. Oh, blocked nicely, but wow, kept alive again. A lot of long rallies in this game. Oh, that was incredible. Cicchini <laughs> behind her back and then blocked and out of bounds. Wow, 22-21. That's a great hit by, by Barry, tooling it off the outside, outside opposite blocker of Liberty. And Barry being a freshman, taking a big step here in this game. Tooling it off, is that what you That's said? That's correct. Yeah, T-O-O-L-I-N-G, yep. tooling. Use the block like a tool. I like that. We'll have to use that in football somehow. I don't know, I'll, I'll, we'll work it in on Saturday for you. Frondelet by one here, they 
course, the uh, winner is whoever gets to 25 first. You have to win by two points, correct? That's correct. Alvino sets up Cicchini. That's, that's illegal in a number of uh, gyms across America. <laughs> and Cicchini taking care of that tip in front of the left side attacker. And that's usually, again, where the Libero plays. The Libero will make sure that that ball does not fall. Now, is that something that she sees when she gets that double block in front of her to know that there's got to be a place on the floor that there is no one and I can go there? That's right. Experienced players trying to manipulate that aspect of the game. Barry, Alvino will now set, try, up off the roof. Once again, Crondelet plays the roof. They're very good at the roof, especially if it hits off the fans, I, I've, I've noticed. And block back. Boy, we've had some great rallies in this game. Lamette. Oh, and this is going to take a heck of an effort. Now they have to send that back, and they can't get there. And Carondelet now with a one-point lead and serve here, 23-22 in game three. And Liberty's going to call a timeout. They're going to use their second timeout of the game. I get, you know, it's it's uh, it's always amazing when you come see something for the, one of the you know the first times. I can I can tell you this, coach. Oh, the Liberty coach thought that this uh, this far pass was out here. Well, it wouldn't matter. It hit the Liberty player. Why would that? That's right. There's the Liberty player with the pursuit. Right. It wouldn't have mattered, right? Because they already had contacted it. Correct. I know when I was in high school, it wasn't played at this level yet. It hadn't gotten to this point where uh, basketball or, or volleyball, even girls softball, they've really come a long way over the past 25 34. How many years I've been out of high school, Coach? I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to remember. White and Anoni, Doctors of Dentistry, Roger Fernando, Fernando State Farm Insurance, a 19th hole casino and lounge, Randy's Carpet Care, the New Mecca Cafe. You ever eaten there, Coach? New Mecca Cafe in Pittsburgh? I have not yeah. been there. That's a great place. Of course, Guillermo and the crew down there. Bridgehead Self Storage at Rock Bottom Records. I don't know if you like the rock and roll, Coach. Of course, I'm a big rock and roll fan. My buddy Rick runs Rock Bottom Records. Next week, you too has a new DVD CD combo set coming out for the, all you Christmas shoppers. That's all coming up here real quick. Yeah, I only like two things really, sports and music. And music. That's it. <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta throw her in there. After the timeout, Carondelet will serve. This is uh, Fontana, and she's just a freshman in an important part of this match. And that time they went right at her and attacked her with that kill by Cicchini. And we're all tied at 23, and now Liberty has the serve. Now, when you're coaching, do you prefer when you have the serve or when you're on defense? Uh, my personal preference would be I would like to receive the serve. I want to be on defense so I can earn the point. So you, and, and especially now here, you've got your, there's, a, and then that time they kind of crossed her up with a deep serve, and now she's going to have to return that pass. Here's the set, cross court. Oh, and that's nasty by Try. 24-23. Game point for uh, Liberty here in game number three. That's right. That was a nice set by the setter on Liberty side, Ciccini. And a late block by Trondelet. Ball goes down. So Ciccini will serve. It's a deep serve. Draws ball, plays it towards the net. Laquette back serve. Lamette dug out nicely, set, and has to be sent over. Lamette draws ball towards the net. Barry, little touch. Oh, dug up nicely, and it, wow, and we're tied. Christina Barry making something of that, of that tight set, tipping it to the middle of the court. Katie Try on that one uh, slipped on this, or when she went down to try to dig that ball, and then actually touched her again, and that's why that point went to Carondelet tied at 24. You have to win by two now. So it would have to be 26, 24, 27, 25. And for those of you that have ever played ping pong on Saturday night over at the old uh, rec hall, <laughs> you have to win by two. It's like that in tennis. Oh, for what, what is it about sports with nets and you have to win by two, coach? You know, I, 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 I tend to think that they're invented by the same player. Lower net, high net. So the guy invented volleyball, ping pong, tennis, badminton, all the same guy. That's got it. All be. right. He's got a heck of a royalty check done. <laughs> Too much time on his hands. Dug out. Oh, what a play that time by Cicchini. Dug by Humphrey. Now this will have to be sent over. Right at the net. Lamette 
to Laquette. Back, back pass. Oh, and it's blocked and out of bounds, and it's 25-24. And once again, that play works. It's really surprising how both teams are going out of here playing aggressive volleyball. Here comes the slide to Lamette, hitting it down the line off the blocker's hands out of bounds. I think that went off either. It's, uh, I believe it was try at the net, and it's 25-24, and Liberty needs to win this point to get the serve back. And they, oh, and they do because that was that serve was short, and you obviously can't do that, Coach, right? That's right. 25-25. Now Try rotates to server. And, and they're looking. I, I notice them now. She's looking for where Drawsball is on the floor. And Drawsball's moving kind of to where she goes. And that time, that was actually handled by someone else. And it's not uh, as smooth as it normally is. And that is sent out. And now Liberty has a one-point lead in game three. Timeout, Carondelet. Coach, I got to tell you, this is pretty exciting stuff. This is very exciting. And, and we've been playing for almost an hour and a half, but we could still have to play two more of these games. I'm not going to get home to see Nip Tuck. <laughs> thank God, thank God I'm taping it. <laughs> Purchase your copy of this game. Of course, shipping courtesy of UPS included, $25. Call 933-6264. We understand we're doing a brisk business. I'm sure the Lion's going to want this because we haven't had the Lion on. This is the first time for Liberty in this school year that we've had them on. And the line certainly had some moves there. Yeah, yeah. just so some of you who are out there in the Brentwood area, we were, were going to cover the Liberty Freedom football game, but we had to, because of Veterans Day, they moved the game, and then we had to go cover something that we do in the other community access area. You know, we do uh, council meetings and other things like that, so we are not going to cover that, so we put Liberty on. We've already done Freedom. We feel like we've, we've done everyone but one school. I'm not going to tell you who they are because we're going to do them in football, and we're going to get everyone in before the year changes, which is very good when you look at the schedule. Laquette, Liberty needs to win this point to win game three. Nice dig. That's right at the net. Lamette, little tip. Alvino, left hand. Put back. It's over. And Liberty wins 27-25 in game three. And coach, that was kind of a crazy nutty one. What really happened there that impressed you in that match, in that part of the match? Well, I tell you, they, both teams started that game off playing inconsistently. Serve receiving the ball as well as serving the ball. A lot of service errors. I think Liberty tightened up. Switched up their uh, switch up their strategy, mixed up the, the strong attacks as well as tips. They really they really kept Pondelet off balance defensively. So that'll do it. Liberty leads two to one. They need to win three games to win this match, and we'll be back with game four after this on Comcast. Tonight's Comcast game of the week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Amorosis Antique and Floral in Antioch located at 204 G Street in the Old Rivertown District of Antioch. Amorosa specializes in fresh flowers for weddings and special events with a large variety of gift items such 